Larry Dickinson raced in the Indy 500 from 1969 to 1981. However, one entry is missing from this list. Larry Dickinson's 1980 Indy 500 entry is a forgotten piece of racing history. Driving with RP Racing, his chassis and engine manufacturer is unlisted. Although RP Racing had no affiliation with Roger Penske, from my knowledge, it's likely that this entry had a Penske chassis and a Cosworth engine. After all, this was the combination that he used in 1978, 1979, and 1981 with the same team. He failed to qualify for the 1980 Indy 500 with this entry that is forgotten by most. The first ever IndyCar death actually helped create one of the best race cars from the 1910s. In a race in Riverside, California on April 8th, 1916, Bob Berman and five others were killed when Berman's Peugeot overturned. His car lacked a roll hoop, which contributed to his passing. His death led to his friends Barney Oldfield and Harold Miller to develop a streamliner speedway car called the Golden Submarine. It made its competitive debut at the Chicago Board Speedway on June 16th, 1916. 17. Of the 50 races the car entered, it won 24 times, but most importantly, nobody has ever been killed in the Golden Submarine. AJ Foyt is an IndyCar legend. Seven IndyCar championships and four Indy 500 wins are numbers that remain unbeat for almost 40 years. Of his seven championships, though, his most dominant was by far in 1964. Across the 13 races this year, he won all but three of them. The races he didn't win all ended in DNFs, but he still cruised to a championship. He won the championship this year over Roger Ward by an astonishing 772 points in what has got to to be one of the biggest racing field smackdowns ever. Al LaCosta attempted to qualify for the Indy 500 14 times. Of these attempts, he failed to qualify 8 times, had 3 practice crashes that ended his month of May early, and sold his car to 3-time F1 champion Emerson Fittipaldi, in Wells Al's final time on the Indy 500 entry list in 1984. The only Indy 500s he raced in were 1976 and 77, where he finished no better than 25th. He never had good equipment and usually raced very old cars, which he could barely afford on his shoestring budget, so the fact he got the results he did shows that he was an alright driver. Jackie Stewart is a man who needs no introduction, but many of you probably don't know that Jackie once won an IndyCar race, albeit a non-championship race. It's early October of 1966, and the world's biggest stars arrive at Fuji Speedway for an 80-lap IndyCar race. Strangely enough, as you can see from this footage from a D-Film archive, they're running the track counterclockwise. That, or the footage just looks fucked up, but anyways... Jackie Stewart won the pole and eventually the race, leading 59 laps on the day in a very strange event. Kenji Momota entered only two IndyCar races across his fairly forgotten racing career. These two races were the 1990 and 1992 Indy 500s. His 1992 Indy 500 was more cut and dry as Kenji was bumped from the field in his team car Lola. His 1990 escapades, on the other hand, are far less certain as Kenji never appeared at rookie orientation practice in late April 1990. He would be replaced by Jeff Andretti, who failed to qualify. In 1996, the new Indy Racing League ran its first season. The original idea for the series was to end the year at the Indy 500, much like what the World Endurance Championship did for a few years at Le Mans. In 96, however, there would only be three races, so the championship results could get royally janked. That's exactly what happened, because by the end of the year, there's a tie in the points. Most series have rules if this one-in-a-million thing happens, but the Indy Racing League didn't. In possibly the only time in motorsports history, two champions were crowned. If you want to know about the careers of those two champions, I've actually made videos about them on YouTube in the past. Just go to Canyon Line Films on YouTube and check out my series All IndyCar. Also, if you're feeling really generous, you can subscribe. The 1979 Jimmy Bryan 150 at Phoenix Raceway was the very first kart series race, taking place on March 11th, 1979. Bobby Unser driving for Roger Penske would start on pole and lead 84 laps on the day, eventually finishing 5th. Gordon Johncock would be the eventual winner, leading 33 laps. There's confusion towards the end, too, with a possible scoring error, where Alan Sir Sr. was classed higher than he actually was. Despite CART being a very influential organization in the coming decades, the very first race broadcast is lost to time. 
Ray Lipper was a businessman who only raced in 1981 and 1982. The founder of Centerline Wheels, he attempted only one IndyCar race at Phoenix in 1982. Driving his own 81 Eagle, he failed to qualify for the race. He also raced in Formula Atlantics this year, but in his one season as a driver, Ray Lipper wasn't successful. He was an avid boat racer too, but I can't find any information about Ray's career on the water. After his racing career came to an end, he returned to run his company, which is still around to this day. Unfortunately, Ray passed away in 2019 at the age of 85. Joe Tetz raced in USAC in 1972 and 1973. The driver from New York raced only three times in his IndyCar career. In those three races, he was flagged off the track in Trenton for being too slow, blew a head gasket in Milwaukee, and as final IndyCar race in Trenton in 73, he was black flagged after just three laps. His qualifying speed for that last race was roughly 15 miles an hour slower than Gary Benhausen's race-winning average speed had trend the year prior. The 67 Watson that he drove in all of these starts had a storied life and will be discussed at length on this channel in the future.